Here's a little teaser of what I'm doing in today's video with Kay. I'm taking her out for a bunch of different portrait shoots and giving you a tutorial on getting accurate focus with these fast Samyang lenses. Then we're going to head to the park and set up a budget photo shoot using a simple garden hose to create these shots. In today's video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna be focusing specifically on manual focus lenses. If you're looking at shooting in a budget way, having the option to go for manual lenses can save you a whole bunch of money, but it does take a bit of practice to get good at manually focusing. So at the moment, I've got the 85mm 1.4 from Samyang on here. Samyang makes some really high quality manual focus lenses. So I've got a bunch of their different lenses and we're gonna go through and show you different techniques on how to focus with them to get the best results. So to do that, I'll be using Circlix a lot for a lot of the shoot, but because I'm gonna show you some different techniques for focusing, I'll also use my D5. And then, because it's the middle of winter, and Kay keeps telling me just how tough she is, we're going to set up a water shoot. I bought you a gift, hose attachment that has seven different spray patterns and we're going to use this to create some interesting water effects in the foreground background and psh, all over her and hopefully get some nice portraits that will make up for her potentially getting pneumonia today you up for it yeah sure why not let's do it hurrah Okay, folks, so as I said in this video, we are going to build up and do a really cool photo shoot. But for now, I just want to go through and talk to you about how to manual focus because a lot of people are put off by it. It is, you know, it's a new skill that you need to learn. First thing you want to note is a lens that's made for manual focusing, a manual focus only lens is much easier to manually focus than one of your AF lenses just switched to manual focus. For starters, you get a huge focus throw. This is the 135, famous one from Samyang, the F2. And you see just how much rotation you get, like over a 180 degree rotation. So you can really make finite adjustments to it. Now, cool thing with the Nikon and Canon cameras and a lot of the others as well, they will actually give you focus confirmation even if the lens and the camera aren't talking to each other. But essentially, when you're shooting with a Nikon, even with old Sir Clicks a lot here, 15, 16 year old camera, as you're manually focusing, you'll see in the bottom left corner, a green arrow saying that way, that means you need to turn the focus ring that way, or that way, you need to turn the focus ring that way. And when it gets to a final circle in the middle, that means whatever you have your focus point on is in focus. Now, if you're shooting, for example, with the 8514, at 1.4, you're going to have such a tiny shallow depth of field. So that isn't always practical. And that's where shooting with an EVF camera or a camera that has a good digital display that you can zoom in on, like the D5, makes it much easier to focus. So I shot away with the 50 and 85. I have no idea why, but for some reason, she just kept breaking into laughter. That's all they really want. Something, something, blondes and fun. So up close here, 50 mil is about where I want to be for a tight headshot. You might think 85, 135, but you've got to keep in mind this is a crop camera. So those become extremely long lenses. So here at the end of the park bench, shot um, a, a nice distance for working for portraiture. The 50 mil has an equivalent field of view of 75 mil, which is plenty. So I'm going to get a few more here and then let's switch it out and I'll talk to you about shooting with EVF. Here we go, here's two shots showing the difference between the 50 and the 85. Both of them crazy sharp, but you see going that much close with the 85, just a tiny depth of field. I actually really love shooting with the 135. I find the magnification is good for being able to focus through the lens, but on a crop body, it does mean you're a fair way away and you may fall over and get laughed at by your model. What a monster. Anyway, we shot her through, got a few different options. And here you can see it just obliterates the background. One thing you really want to try is to get poses that are as stable as possible. You may only have a few centimeters depth of field, so I would get Kay to you know, hold her pose as stable as she could so that we could really get in there. I would focus it right in on her eye, and there's your shot. So with the popularity of mirrorless cameras, using manual focus lenses is getting more and more popular and arguably easier than ever before. Now, the most commonly used focus assist is focus peaking. 
I actually have a big problem with it. And I wanna show you a demonstration of it now, and then I'll show you some better options that I think work for that using my D5. So taking a look on the back of my Sony here, you can see there's only the tiniest little bits of peaking showing up there. As I move it through really slowly, it's almost impossible to see what is exactly in focus. And it's only really picking up good areas of contrast around the sides. I'm not even getting any peaking indication on his eyes. And another thing I find is so often when it does show you say that the whole cheek and eye is in focus, then when you actually check it, you're shooting at 1.4 and you've only got a tiny mount in sharp focus. So taking a look at these couple of images on the back of the screen, the camera indicated that the eyes should be sharp, but as you can see, it's missed it. So let me show you a different technique. Focus peaking, sorry, bird fight over there. Focus peaking is really handy for knowing that you're vaguely in the sharp focus, but I really think the best is your own eye to check it and see when the, you see the details in the eyelashes go really crisp, you know that you've got the eyes in focus. So here looking in, you can just see when it gets in focus, the hair suddenly gets really sharp. So, great thing about this one, you can touch where you wanna go, focus right on in there. And if we move it right onto her eye, let's go on the far eye, even though that's not the one I would normally get, you can see when it gets perfectly in sharp focus. So none of this guesswork. If you were using peaking, normally it's gonna say all of that is in focus. So then jumping back out of our shot, then we know we've got her eye in perfect sharp focus. We go in and review our shot, and there we go, we've got it. So here are some of those shots shooting on top of that tassel thing. I really, really like shooting with the 135. Of course, those birds did catch my attention and distract me for a little while, so I got a few shots of them. The two of them were doing a little mating dance, and you can see how tiny the depth of field there is with the front one in and the second one out. And then I managed to regain focus and back to K. So I hope you're enjoying this all so far. It's time to head to the park now to put together this water shoot. I've never done something like this before, but it's already starting to rain, so we don't need to feel too bad for getting K wet on this cold day, because we're all getting wet anyway. Let's go set it up. So I should say, whilst I really love the 50 and 85, they're great for portraiture on full frame or on crop, the 135 is something really special, and it just helps me eliminate distractions. That's gonna come in so handy for this water shoot. As we drove to the park, Kate did her makeup. I tried my best to help. Hey. Hit a bump. 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 <laughs> it's always fun shooting with, you know, the same people again and again, you become great friends. So, we've come to a park, found a, brought a hose, found a tap that had the top part still attached. This isn't water theft, because this is my local area council, so I pay rates here. And we're actually gonna shoot it against public toilets. Let me show you. Okay, so this is literally the side of a men's room, but blurred out in the background, it's just gonna be dark, and that's what we want. We want a dark background, so I can still use a relatively fast aperture to have her in focus, the background blurring out, and have it exposed kind of dark, then just add a little bit of light onto her, and then we'll play with water in front, water behind, and water on her. So let's work it through and see what Sir Clicks a Lot can make with these Samyang manual focus lenses. Okay, so let me just step this through for you. If you're interested in learning more about light, check out my Take Control of the Light series with Tina. I go through all of this stuff in loads of detail. But for now, I've got my camera in manual mode. I am at f2.8, 1 1 60th of a second, and ISO 125th. Bit odd, but that's what this camera does. Now focusing in on her. Woohoo! Very nice everything's way underexposed. It's not totally blacked out, but the background is gonna be nice and soft and extremely dark, but so is she. Popping in my light. Now, as I said, you could use a different light source. The main advantage to using the Ellen Chrome today is I can adjust my power right from here. So I've got the light off to her right. That's her preferred side, so we're having it come in from that side. So imagine that I'm her. We've got the light coming in and hitting all of this front part of her, even though we're only seeing this. That's gonna give a natural fall off onto this far side. If we lit her from this side or from straight on, we're not gonna get nice shadowing. So again, all in manual focus being on the tripod, I've got the point right on her face to confirm focus. 
So we should be in business. We'll just get this all flowing and then we'll get the water flowing. Bring your hand up, your right hand up a little. Yeah, there you go. So we just continued to shoot away without any water to make sure everything was looking good and we were happy with the results. So satisfied with the balance of light and you know that everything was going smoothly, now it's time to add the water. So we'll start off having the water just fall behind her, see how they're looking, and then we'll mix it up. We need to be a little bit careful because we don't want to get all of the cameras covered even though it is raining now. So we tried a few different variations with the water at different distances behind her, the light coming in from different angles to make sure it wasn't catching on the paint in the background too much or that it was in the cases where we wanted it. Here's a few different editing treatments. Quick tip for you, if you really want the water to show up, you wanna make sure the light is passing through it nice and strong. So here we made sure the light is really firing through the water and you can see it shows up a lot more clearly. In the actual files, there's so much detail, I'm sure you lose a lot on compression. Happy with how all of that was going, it's time to actually get her wet. So we had to work fast, she went through a bunch of different poses. We really didn't take too much time on this, we just got as many shots as we could before she finally called it quits and bailed, which I totally understand, it was so cold. That's the first shot where she was putting on a brave face, but that was actually pain, I think. We went through and got a bunch of different variations. As I say, this 135 is so sharp, going in on 100% crop there, so much detail. Likewise, I love this shot, and let's go in on that. There's just so much detail down to the water drop. So, your makeup is looking impeccable. What a trooper, man. It's cold. I'm not wearing a jacket so she can wear it and so that I wasn't rubbing in the fact that she was getting wet. But it's the middle, literally the middle of winter here in Australia. So you're a champion. Thank you. We, with the water actually on her, shot for maybe two or three minutes. So this is something we definitely have to redo in summer, right? Where the yeah. shots we got are already looking pretty cool, but a lot more time would really bring them up. In terms of the manual focus lenses, like anything, the more you do it, the better you're going to get. Most of the day I was using Sir Clicks a lot, just using the little focus confirmation, relying on my histogram to check my exposures. Some of it I did do on the D5 to be able to really punch in and check the focus as well. There's all those other tips that I explained as well. But the biggest one I think for manual focus, well there's two. One is make sure your subject is stable. So I tried other than shivering as you're worried that you're gonna get hypothermia. But the rest of the shoots today, we had a shoot sit or lean against something or take a pose that was really easy so she could hold it and not be swaying around too much. The other one is, sorry to say there's no shortcut. The more you go and do it, the better you'll get. The first day you go shooting, your strike rate may only be you know, 50% or something. As you get better and better at it, your strike rate's gonna go way, way up and you're gonna get great results. But if you're on a budget and wanting to get access to great quality glass, definitely do get yourself some manual focus lenses and take the time to learn it and work out how it works best for you. It may not work for all situations. If you're shooting, I don't know, like hockey or something, manual focusing, that could be quite difficult. But street and portraiture and macros, definitely worth checking them out. You can check out all the Samyang lenses I use today with links in the caption below. Thank you again for today, such a trooper. I mean, it started raining and I was feeling sorry for myself. So big up, please do check out her social media. That's all in the caption below as well. Bye. Bye.